Hey everybody, welcome to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron, and I'm gonna do something a little bit different this video. A couple videos back, I uh, put up three different projects. I don't remember exactly what they were, like keep working on Marlboro Man, do a walk around of the old blue and white Chevy, or something else. I don't, I don't remember what the third one was, but that's not a big deal. So anyways, I got quite a bit of feedback of people wanting me to do a walk around video on the blue and white, old blue and white Chevy. So I figured let's try something different. Let's do something new. And I'm gonna try to blow you guys up with a whole bunch of information that hopefully will blow you away and you'll find it kind of interesting and or exciting. So, but before we get into that, if you haven't been to harmongarage.net and checked out the merch yet i really appreciate it if you guys would go over there and do it maybe you'll find something you like maybe not but either way next thing i want to thank ray ray sent me a air over hydraulic jack for my cherry picker if you're subscribed to the channel and watch a lot of the videos you know when i was pulling the diesel motor out of the gmc over there the my ram on my cherry picker gave up on me and i did go get a new one and replace it but i said that i really wished i could have one of the air over hydraulic ones because they make life so much easier and ray bought one and sent it to me so ray thank you very much i appreciate you a lot so okay on to the video now we're gonna go about this a little bit different than say just a walk around video i mean if we were just doing a walk around video i could just walk around the truck with the camera pointed at it i could put a reel up on social media and go bam there's a walk around video of the truck it's not how we're going to go about this we're going to do a little bit of role playing little theatrical stuff or I, I don't even know if that's what it's called i just said it but anyways what we're going to do is let's say it's kind of like a choose your own adventure but i'm choosing your adventure for you so anyways let's say you're driving down the highway over there just and you see this truck sitting up there on the side of the road with a for sale sign in the window but it doesn't have anything written on the for sale sign it just says for sale that's it so you know that there's so at that point when you drive by and stop you know that there is a blue and white chevrolet pickup that's sitting there for sale but what year is it i don't know uh what engine does it have in it i don't know what options does it have I don't know. I don't even know what year it is. How am I going to know anything else about it? So I'm going to get out of my car. You're going to get out of your car and we're going to walk up to it. We're going to go, man, that's one of them cool hoods. I know that's like late fifties, early sixties, somewhere in there. I know that just from what I know, you might not even know that you might just know it's an old Chevy truck and you know, it's a Chevy because it says Chevrolet right there. Chevy emblem. If you know what a Chevy emblem is, you know, that's it right there. So we're gonna come up, we're gonna walk around it and go, man, this thing's got good tires on it. That's a selling point right there. They got at least, you know, six inches of dragon left on them. So, okay, and then we come and we see, oh, Apache 10. Okay, so it's a Chevy Apache 10. But what year is it? I still don't know. I don't know anything. It's a Chevy Apache 10. What does that mean? I don't know. So we're going to keep walking around. Okay, it's got a little bit of rust down there and a little bit of rust here. It's an old truck. Uh, it was sold in Cedar Bluff, Mississippi at one point or another. And last time it was registered was 1986, Clay County, Mississippi. Man, that thing's been sitting for a long time. Probably doesn't run, but it might. Anyways, we keep walking around. We're looking. 
we noticed that the tailgate is totally destroyed like that's I can fix it, but it's going to take some heat. It's going to take some bending. It's going to take some welding. Okay. But wait, while we're looking in the bed, we got a rim and tire that's no good. Hubcaps that don't belong to this truck. Tarp over here. Oh, hey, look, there's another tailgate that's exactly like that one, only not. So we got a tailgate that comes with it. That's awesome. And we got our hubcap there. Got a bullet hole. That's definitely a bullet hole. It's always nice when you know your vehicle's been shot at. So we keep walking around. Keep looking. Hey, look. There's that Apache 10 again. But that's it. I mean, okay. So now we know we have an old blue and white Chevy truck that's kind of rusty and none of the tires hold there so i'm interested in it i like it i think that there's something that we can do with this we can restore this we can make this nice we can customize it we can do whatever we want so i want to know what it is but we talked to the person that owns it they don't know what it is they pulled it out of a pasture somewhere and and they just have it for sale so i need certain information so I can go to the tax office or the DMV or the title office or whatever it is in your area. I'm going to need certain information to take them so that I can say, hey, this is what I have and I want to make it mine legally. So anyways, so we're going to go in here. I'm going to open the door. Oh wow, doors are in pretty good condition. Got a little surface rust at the bottom, but they're not rusted out. Door handle, window cranks missing. Got vent windows. The seat, I don't know that it's been recovered or not, but it's in really good shape. The blow me up tanks behind it. Tanks in good shape. For being old, steering wheel seems to be in good shape. We got our gauges. Looks like it's got 67,000 miles on it. I'm going to guess it's 67,000 because it was only on the road for, you know, 25 years or so. But I don't know that yet because I don't know what year it is. Glove box is missing. That door's in pretty good shape. So on and so forth. Okay. So there. All right. We got a pretty cool truck. It's pretty neat. It's got a bunch of garbage in it. Needs to be cleaned up. But... I mean, that just, that just comes with the territory. It's just an old truck. But now, back to needing certain information. How do I find out what this truck is and all that stuff? So we're going to come over here. And I just happen to know that there's a VIN tag right here. But if you don't know, you just can kind of go on Google or somewhere, search engine, whatever, and type in you know, where's the VIN tags on old Chevy trucks? And they'll tell you, you know, some are on the dash, some are on the A pillar, some are on the B pillar, yada, yada, yada. So I, uh, I crossed off the last couple digits of the VIN because I'm not saying anybody would do anything shady, but I don't want to take chances. This is a customer's truck or a friend's truck. It's not mine. So we're just going to leave that off and, and that's not important anyways. But we're going to look at this and we have one C144A1013 blah, 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 blah. Anyways, once again, we know it's a Chevrolet because it very clearly right there says Chevrolet. So anyways, now we've got a VIN number, but what can we do with that? So once again, you can go online, you can search around and find a breakdown for it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to break it down for you. So we got one, one is our first number. So we're going to look at that and we're going to go, okay, one means it's a 1961. Okay, cool. That's really good information. That's the first thing we needed to know. What year is it? It's a 1961. So there we go. We've got good information already. C means it's a conventional two-wheel drive. Basically, it just means it's two-wheel drive, not four-wheel drive. Also, 
good information to have. Next thing we got is a 1-4. One, 1-4 four. One, four means that it's a half ton short bed. So obviously they came in long beds or short beds. This is a short bed. So we've got a 1961 two-wheel drive short bed. And the next four means that it's a truck. So the four stands for pickup. So we got that figured out. And then it's A. A means that it was assembled at the Atlanta assembly plant in Atlanta, Georgia. Now there's, I'll put it in the video here and I'll show, tell you guys how many plants there is. I know during the square body era, there was seven, but I'll tell you the different plants and where they are. And I'll give you the letter codes for each plant. But anyways, this truck was assembled in Atlanta and then the rest of it's going to be a six digit number after the a from there on which this one is one zero one three blah 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 and that is going to be your production sequence number or it'd be like a serial number on something else so that is the actual identification number of this truck all those numbers before that it's a 61 pickup half ton short bed made in atlanta there was probably 10,000 of those i don't know for sure but i'm guessing there was probably 10,000 1961 half ton short bed pickups made in atlanta so that you can't do anything with that that means it just it tells you what it is but it means nothing so the 1013 blah 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 is your identifying number so that being said production sequences usually start out with a 100,000 or a 200,000 or 300,000 or 400,000 they don't start out at zero they start out at a number so like this one most likely started out as one zero 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 one and this is one zero one three la -di da so that means that this is the 1300 and la -di da trucks truck made in atlanta in 1961 so they usually go in number sequence and you know pretty cool so this is a low low number for the atlanta assembly plant for 1961 so okay we know what it is we know it's a 1961 chevy apache 10 two-wheel drive conventional pickup so on and so forth okay so now we decide to buy it and we're gonna take it home well we take it home and we decide that we want to start building said truck and we got to do body work and paint okay so i'm gonna go down to my local paint supplier and I'm going to tell them, hey, I need some blue and some white to match my 61 Chevy pickup. And they're going to go, okay. Uh, what color? Blue and white. Well, which blue? Uh, blue and white. No. So, somewhere in your vehicle, and this, this isn't just trucks, this is cars everything and as the vehicles got newer they started to do it different but as far as a 61 goes this has what's called a trim tag now trim tags aren't all in the same spot some of them are underneath the hood some of them are inside the cab some of them are on the door it just it depends where they put them for that model vehicle for that year now i did some searching actually i got to give my buddy jeff credit because jeff is really good at all this stuff and he enjoys doing all this stuff so we worked on this project together i'm just getting the glory of making the video and telling all you guys so thank you very much jeff i appreciate all your help in putting this together but jeff just happened to know where the trim tag was and he told me so down here in the driver's side kick panel we have the trim tag which I'm gonna show you guys a picture, a better picture of it that I already have taken that I can put in here, but.
the end of the day we're going to start off down here and the trim model it doesn't have a trim model so i'm just going to call that base it doesn't have anything extra just a base trim underneath that we have paint which is 736 which i'll explain to you in a minute then underneath that it says wheelbase 115 so we know that it's a short bed so 115 inch wheelbase is a short bed up here it says the max gvw of this vehicle is 5200 pounds and then down here it's it talks about engine options which i'm going to explain to you in a minute but i already started talking to you about the paint codes or you know trying to get the right color of paint to tell your paint supplier what you need to repaint your truck and uh sorry i got bugs flying all over my face you're gonna need numbers to tell you what paint what your paint code is so you can give the paint code to your paint supplier so they know what color you need to uh repaint your truck so i showed you guys where it said paint and in the picture i'll show the picture right now zoomed in and the paint code on this is 736 so once again i mean it's life is so easy nowadays with the internet because you can go on the internet and search just about anything and find what you're looking for but i'm going to go online i'm going to go to a search engine whichever one you choose to use and i'm going to type in 1961 chevy c10 paint codes and I'm going to get 52 different ones. You're going to pick one that's easy to read or works the best for you. And we're going to look it up. Okay, so that says 736. Okay, so what we did, we went, we looked up 61 Chevy paint codes, 736, and we couldn't find it. We couldn't find a 736. And we knew that it was blue. This is the original color. And so we start looking around. Well, there's four different blues that are an option in 1961. None of them are 736 paint coat. So Jeff and I sat there and looked and looked and looked. And Jeff finally came up with a 736. And we don't know 100% for sure, but 736 is the same as a 707A Brigade Blue. So that's what we have here. The blue on this truck is 707 or 707A Brigade Blue. That's our paint code. That's what we need to know to get the blue for this truck. Now, where he found the 736, it tells you that it's a 70, it says 736 for the code. And the description is 707 Brigade Blue Two-Tone. Well, what would you consider this? One tone, two tone, blue, white. So 736 is our signification that this is a two tone truck instead of just being 707 Brigade Blue, 707 Brigade Blue with standard white on top. So 736 is our Brigade Blue and white two tone truck. So now we know that we have a 1961 Chevy Apache 10, short bed, two wheel drive, 5200 GVW, 115 inch wheelbase, blue and white, brigade blue and white, two tone, and all that. So back to our trim tag. Now our trim tag gives us our engine options. It says it can have a 235 inline six, Thriftmaster economy engine, which has 95 horsepower at 3200 rpm it can have a standard 235 with 115 horsepower at 3600 rpm or it can have a 238 283 v8 with 137 horsepower at 4000 rpm and that's what it tells us on the tag those are the three engine options those are the horsepower ratings at the designated rpms and that's all it tells us so we know by the trim tag that it either has a 235 or a 283 but that's all it tells us so we move on
how do we know what engine it has well easiest way to find out what engine it has is to look at the engine so i'll come over here i've opened this hood 15 times today there we go okay get that to stay up and we look at it and the first thing i notice is it is definitely not a 283 so it's not a v8 it's not a 283 we're gonna go ahead and rule that out right off the bat so it's not a 283 it's clearly an inline six so it's gonna be a 235 right because that's what it says on the trim tag in there and that's the option that we have and if you're familiar with these older motors you can look at that and you can tell that it's a 235 i can i know the differences between the 235 and the 216s and it's definitely not uh 192 or 250 or 292 or anything like that or 194 i think it's 194 250 292 anyways i can clearly tell just by looking at it that that truck doesn't have any mufflers on it no i'm just kidding it's it's a 235 but is it the thriftmaster economy 235 or is it the standard 235 do i have 95 horsepower or do i have 117 horsepower what what do i have here honestly sitting here right now i've got a junk truck that doesn't run but what did it have so next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here on the motor and once again you can go on the internet and you can check and all that kind of stuff but you're gonna look for your casting numbers and your suffix codes so you can search online find out where they are but i'm gonna start back here down next to the starter where i'm pointing i don't know if you guys can see it or not but i have a con4 now con4 is not really something that you need to know it it's just a casting number that chevy put on there because let's say that first of all it stands for conveyor four so that means this motor was casted and came down conveyor four the reason that they put stuff like that on there is because one they know exactly where it came from but if they find out that they got a bad batch of metal and they cast a bunch of blocks that are junk only on conveyor four then they need to know that so that says conveyor four that tells them yes this motor went down the junk line so yes we need to recall that or whatever the case may be so it's a lot of talking i'm sorry guys hopefully this is interesting to you guys and i know i keep looking down and it's because i made notes on this stuff so i don't screw anything up all right so next to the con conveyor four still behind the starter over here there's another number right here i know that because we looked it up online and found out and that number is i one five zero so i is chevy's coding in 1961 for september the one five would be 15 and the zero is 1960 so september 15th 1960 was when this block was cast which makes sense because you know they start building the 61 model year in september or october of the pre or august or september october somewhere in there of the previous year so it makes sense september 15th 1960 that's when this motor was cast so that's cool all right so but still we don't know what it is we know what conveyor the casting came down we know when it was cast but what is it so down here in front of the distributor underneath this nub behind the breather tube down here it's really hard to see i can't even get the camera in there to show you guys but anyways right down here there's the actual casting number the casting number for this particular motor is 376 9716 which 
when you look that up once again online you look up 235 or inline six casting numbers and you're most likely going to find a spreadsheet that has them all on it but we looked it up 3769716 is a 58 to 62 235 now i know that i told you the three motor options were the am i even saying the right thing i think i am yes the thrift master economy 235 or the standard 235 well we did a lot of searching and the only thing that we could come up with for the difference between the standard 235 and the thrift master economy 235 was the carburetor and the rear gear ratio but the rear gear ratio is not going to change how much horsepower output the motor has so basically the carburetor is going to be our determining factor but we found out that the thrift master and the standard 235 had different carburetors but we didn't figure out which carburetor is which one so basically what i'm getting at is we did a lot of research we know we have a 235 we don't know if it's the 95 horse 235 or the 117 horse 235 we know we have a 235 but so further going further on we know we have a 58 to 62 235 that came down conveyor four on september 15th 1960. so then we come back here and you can see right there behind the distributor there's that flat tab right there that i've cleaned off and the reason i clean that off is because that has a suffix code well what's a suffix code suffix code is a number that they stamp into the motor at assembly so the production number for the motor is the casting number you got your what conveyor it came down on what day suffix code tells me where when and how so by that our suffix code on this particular motor is f is in frank 0916 j so the f stands for flint so we know that this motor was assembled in flint michigan the truck was assembled in atlanta so they built the motor in flint shipped it down to atlanta and got put in the truck it was assembled on september 16th yeah it was assembled on september 16th and then j stands for 60 to 62 235 which we already knew that so now we know that the block was cast on september 15th the engine was assembled on september 16th and then it was shipped down to atlanta and put in the truck i don't think we had a we just judging by the the production sequence the serial number the id number we know that it was an early model truck which was most likely september so motor was cast middle september motor was put together middle september so the truck was probably assembled you know mid to late september after the motor got shipped down from flint so now we move on right here on the head we have a head casting number which is 3836848 it says gm6 underneath it so we looked up the head casting number and it just says that it's a standard 235 head standard flow 235 head so we've got a 235 with a standard head and a single barrel carburetor um, another little thing that this doesn't really pertain here but it's kind of something you might want to know 235s didn't generally up until certain years i guess but they never really came with an oil filter like they didn't have anything filtering oil you just put your oil in there you ran the mess out of it until you decided it, you wanted to change it you were ready to change it it's time to change it whatever and then you changed the oil but it didn't have any filter but like this one right here has this filter and you may notice it's bolted on to the exhaust manifold with u-bolts it's the mud daubers aren't making it super easy to show you but it's a canister style filter 
it's got a bolt here on top you take that bolt off pull this cover off there's a canister in there you take out push it back in put the bolt back in tighten it down it's got a hose running down here that goes in to the block and it's got this hose that goes into the bottom that comes out of the block so basically it's just taking oil pressure just like if you would hook up an oil pressure gauge or the pressure port on the block it took the pressure port ran a hose up to this filter housing and then ran a hose back and just dumped it i can't see where it's going back in but they just dumped it into a dipstick hole or back in the pan somewhere or whatever so that's was their solution to it needing an oil filter and not having one let's just make something that bolts onto the intake manifold and put it in there okay so now we know what the truck is we know what year it is we know what color it is we know what motor it has in it what's next so i'm not going to get underneath this truck again and show you guys where when or how but i've already been underneath it i've already cleaned everything up and got everything and after much searching this was the hardest searching or the hardest information to find out of everything on this truck is what transmission it has so i get underneath there on the driver's side of the transmission towards the back it has gm18 and then it has a i didn't even write the casting numbers down but i'll put the picture right here and show them to you but anyways it's a saginaw 341 three speed with a production date of 918 of 60 which the production dates right here in this picture i'll show you guys that so here's the production date and here's the um casting number and then here's another picture back here on the tail shaft the tail shaft has its own production date which is august 21st of 60 and it has its own uh, casting number also so now we know that the tail shaft for the transmission was made august 21st of 60 and the actual transmission itself was cast on 918 of 60. so everything on this truck was pretty much made later part of august early september 1960 therefore making it a 61 model truck because it's late um late 60 anything after august september becomes the next model year so anyways uh so it's got a saginaw 341 three speed behind a 235 inline six it's a three on the column or three on the tree as most people call it shifter which means it's a manual transmission but the shifter you shift it up on the column i don't know what rear ends in it we didn't make it that far i couldn't find well i got back there and looked but i couldn't find any identifying numbers or anything on it the tag is already gone so one thing i noticed in this truck is it's a small back window truck which was standard and the big back window was an option as far as i know if i'm wrong let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you noticed about this truck that i didn't tell you or i was wrong about let me know in the comments if you guys like this video and like the breakdown of how you find out information on these trucks or whatever and you want me to do one on this fine piece of machinery right here or on one of those two fine pieces of machinery over there let me know because it's honestly been really fun for me and jeff to go through and find all the information to get this out there so i just thought it'd be kind of neat i got quite a bit of feedback that said that you guys wanted a walk around on this old apache so i figure rather than just doing a two minute walk around saying oh look we got a blue and white truck i'd go into it a little bit further come up with some cool information have a little bit of fun hopefully teach you guys something or at least catch your interest for a little bit so 
but that's it like i said let me know if you want me to do another one or tell me no that's the most boring thing i've ever seen in my life don't ever do it again i listen to what y'all say but anyways 1961 chevy two-tone blue and white brigade blue and white apache 10 step side two-wheel drive pickup truck and i know that because i utilized my search options to find out everything that i could about that truck so i'm thinking about doing a will it start video on that truck you guys want to see a will it start video on that truck you want to see if i can get it fired up and make it run let me know in the comments say heck yeah let's do a will it start or no let's not watch you fail again whatever <laughs> anyways go check out the merch shop harmongarage.net and uh thank you guys so much for watching if it wasn't for you guys i wouldn't be able to do this y'all have a good one we'll see you next time